Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about a theory that explains the status of the economy, especially the economic fluctuation, the business cycle. We're going to talk about the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. What we are up to, we're going to talk about the aggregate supply, what determines the aggregate supply, what are the factors that affect the aggregate supply, and we will know that we have short-run aggregate supply and long-run aggregate supply. We're going to talk about the aggregate demand, what are the factors that affect the aggregate demand, and finally, we're going to talk about the macroeconomic equilibrium, where the supply, the aggregate demand and aggregate supply interact, generating the macroeconomic equilibrium, and we will know that there is a short-run equilibrium and a long-run equilibrium. Well, through our studying of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, we're going to talk about how does this model explain some of the economic phenomena like inflation and recession. Well, let's start by talking about the aggregate supply and, we, and let us talk about the aggregate production function. So, when we talk about the aggregate supply, we are talking about the supply of GDP, the supply of all goods and services in the country. So the supply of all goods and services in the country is actually function in three variables. The size of labor, the size of capital, and the state of technology. So the more labor we have and the more capital we acquire and the higher the state of the economy, the higher is our production and thus the higher is the GDP. So what relates those variables to the GDP is called the aggregate production function, which it shows how quantity of real GDP supplied depends on labor, capital, and technology. Well, this is a simplified equation where the Y is the GDP, L for the labor, K for the capital, and T for the status of technology. Our author here is saying that in words, the quantity of real GDP supplied depends on the quantity of labor, quantity of capital, and the state of technology. So the larger is the labor, the larger is the capital, and the better is the state of technology, the greater is the GDP. Well, when we talk about the supply in the frame of aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, we have to differentiate between two time dimensions, the long run and the short run. Before we, we dig deeper into the definition, let me tell you more about the theory. The theory says that wages are sticky, means that when the economy change or the status of the economy change and maybe inflation rates will go up, wages will be locked back, lagged back. It needs time to adjust to the changes in the economy. And this will lead the economy to be in a status that either above the potential GDP or under the potential GDP. Let's take it in other words. The theory believes that if we leave the economy freely, it will reach the equilibrium automatically. So it will reach the equilibrium where is no unemployment and everyone has job. However, because wages are sticky, sometimes this change or this shift toward the long run equilibrium will be delayed because some of the inputs and with a special concentration focus on wages will take time to move and to adjust the economy to the long run equilibrium. So the long run equilibrium or the long run aggregate supply is actually the level of the GDP where everyone is employed. We are at the potential GDP. However, the short run aggregate supply is the fluctuation around the potential GDP. Let's dig deeper 
So the macroeconomic long run, uh, what is the definition of long run from macroeconomic perspective, is the time frame that's sufficiently long for all adjustment to be made. So real GDP equals potential GDP and we are at full employment. Let me explain this. First, what is potential GDP? Potential GDP is the level of GDP that is big enough for everyone to be employed, where there is zero cyclical unemployment, where everyone is fully employed and we have natural rate of unemployment only. So, through the theory, we know that the economy automatically will reach the potential GDP. However, it takes time for the GDP to go back to the long run equilibrium. And this time is called the long run. The time that is long enough for all variables to adjust to move us from non-potential GDP or a level of GDP that is not the potential to go back to the potential GDP is called the long run. So when we talk about the long run aggregate supply curve, it, re it relates the GDP to the price level in the long run. Let's see how does it look. It looks like this. It's a vertical line where we have on the x-axis, we have the real GDP. On the y-axis, we have the price level. So what do we understand from being vertical? It's related to the price level. So why the long run aggregate supply is related to the price level? Let's go back to microeconomics and we can remember that the the supply curve was upward sloping when it comes to the price level. Why is that? Because as the prices of your good go up and your costs stay the same, this means that as a producer, you are facing a higher profit. So this will encourage more and more producers to get into the market. So the higher the prices, the higher is the supply and production. However, in the case of a long run aggregate supply, the increase in prices means the increase of the prices of your output and the prices of your input. So we will be at the same level of profit and this doesn't encourage anyone to increase production. So LAS or LAS, our long run aggregate supply, will keep vertical against the price level, representing the value of the potential GDP, which in our case is $10 trillion. Now let's talk about the short run aggregate supply. The short run aggregate supply, when we talk about a macroeconomic short run, is a period during which real GDP fallen or risen bef below or above the potential GDP. And this happens in the short run before the economy adjusts to take back the GDP to the potential GDP where there is full employment. Unemployment rate has risen above or fallen before under the, un, under the natural rate of unemployment. We agreed that the potential GDP happens at the full employment or the level of unemployment is the natural rate of unemployment. So the, in the short run, we may be above or under the natural rate of unemployment. Let's see the curve of the short run aggregate supply. The curve of short-run aggregate supply relates the GDP to the price level. It's different than the long-run aggregate supply. Where the long-run aggregate supply was a vertical line, we have here an upward sloping curve, which is the short-run aggregate supply. And the question is, why is that? Why the long-run aggregate supply is vertical, while the short-run aggregate supply is similar to the supply curve that we have seen for one good when we were studying microeconomics? Well, the short-run aggregate supply represents that there is an increase in the price of the goods without an increase in one of the inputs in the production process. And here we focus on the wages. In other words, wages in the short run are sticky. They actually move slowly upward or downward. Why? Because there is 
contracts between companies and their workers that they need time to be adjusted and this actually will cause the, the wages to be sticky and this means that the, when the prices goes goes up the price of the goods and services may go up while the wages didn't follow yet as they didn't follow yet and some of your inputs quotes is actually still low in price and the price of your goods and services is increasing this means more profitability and this will encourage more producers to get into the market causing the supply to go up so along the SAS curve the rise in the price level with no change in the money wage rate and other input prices increases the quantity of real GDP so the SAS is upward sloping well the SAS is upward sloping because a rise in the price level with no change to bear on a higher marginal cost or increase in production and a fall in a price level with no change in the cost induces firm to decrease production to lower marginal cost. Let us explain this. This is actually trying to tell us that the higher the prices, the higher the profitability, and the higher the production. So, when we talk about the short-term aggregate supply, we can see that the short-term aggregate supply can be above the potential GDP like we see all over our curve or under the potential GDP. If you are above the potential GDP, this means that the unemployment is under natural rate of unemployment rate. If it is under the potential GDP, this means that unemployment is above the natural rate of unemployment. Well, let's talk about the movement over the curve over these curves when there is a change in the price level. If there is a change in a price level, there will be no change in the long run aggregate supply because actually it represents the potential GDP. However, there will be an upward movement in the short term aggregate supply once there is a change in a price level, either upward if there is an increase in a price level or downward if there is a decrease in the price level. Now let's talk about the shifting in the aggregate supply curves, the long run and the short run. So when potential GDP increases, this will lead to an increase in both long run aggregate supply and short run aggregate supply. Why is that? Because actually short run aggregate supply is a fluctuation around the potential GDP. So the, when the potential GDP moves to the right, short-term aggregate supply will follow as it is the fluctuation around it. So what would cause a potential GDP to change? Three reasons are there related to the four factors that represent the function for the GDP, the labor, the capital, and the state of the technology. So if there is an increase in a full employment of labor uh, due to migration maybe or a change in capital more accumulation of machines and buildings or an advanced in advancement in technology like increase in, uh, in the speed of internet this will cause the potential GDP to increase causing the long-run aggregate supply to move rightward and short-run aggregate supply will follow as it is the fluctuation around the potential GDP. Now, let's see an example of how, of, of how would a change in the money wage will have over the SAS or the short-run aggregate supply. As money wages will increase, producers will find themselves with, with a lower profit. This will put some of the companies out of the market and as they go out of the market this means that short-run aggregate supply will actually decrease and will shift to the left so let us summarize our first unit is talking about the aggregate supply we define the aggregate supply aggregate demand model which is the model that tries to explain the economic cycle and economic phenomena like economic growth 
and inflation, unemployment. On the other hand, we have talked that we have two components, the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand. For the aggregate demand, there is two time dimension, the short run and the long run. In the short run, wages are sticky and they didn't move. And in the long run, it is the time frame that is enough for all variables to change in order to reach the potential GDP. This is related to the essence of the theory where it believes that the economy shall reach the potential GDP in the long run automatically, but what delays it is the stickiness or the slowness or some of the variables to change, to, uh, to alter the status of the economy. Long run aggregate supply is vertical curve, where SAS is upward sloping. First, the last is representing the potential GDP, which, not, which doesn't change with the price level, in contrary to SAS, which actually increases with the price level. Changes in labor, capital, and state of economy with state of technology will actually change the long run aggregate supply, shift it, and short run aggregate supply will follow. Sometimes there is a change, there are factors that make change in the short run aggregate supply, like the change in the wages or money wages. This increase in the money wages may shift a curve to the left and vice versa until the next unit.